Hi everybody, in this video we are looking at phagocytes and the process of phagocytosis which is part of our non-specific immune response. So first of all we need to be able to identify phagocytes and make sure that we can differentiate them from lymphocytes. Now there are actually there are lots of different kinds of uh, phagocytes and lymphocytes, we just need to know about three of them. So our white blood cells can be split, as I've just said, into our phagocytes and into our lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are involved in our specific immune response and phagocytes are involved in our non-specific immune response, although there is a link between the two. With our phagocytes, we can split them into two types of cell. We have neutrophils and we have monocytes, which then mature to become macrophages. And this is what a neutrophil looks like. So the distinguishing feature of a neutrophil is that it has this nucleus which is lobed. So a lobed nucleus. Our macrophages are bigger than neutrophils and they have quite a big nucleus which is not lobed. Um, and then if we just compare to a regular lymphocyte, they are smaller and the nucleus is very big. It takes up almost the whole cell. We can stain the nuclei uh, of our white blood cells and look at them under a microscope so that the nucleus uh, comes up very clearly. Um, so this is what it would look like if you did that. Neutrophils are found in the blood and in the tissues and they often move around uh, to different parts of the body. So as they're going through the blood, they might move through the wall of the capillary into the tissue fluid. And the lobe nucleus helps them do that because uh, because of the shape of it, it means that the neutrophil is able to squeeze through the pores in the wall of the capillary. Macrophages tend to uh, stay in the organs, so they sort of patrol the organs, so out in the alveoli, for example, uh, but also you find a lot of them in like, the lymph nodes. They tend to stay more in one place rather than moving around as the neutrophils do. Okay, so we're going to look at phagocytosis by neutrophils. Um, the process would basically be the same with macrophages, um, but there's an extra stage. Macrophages can become something called an APC. I'm not going to talk about that here, but you can see what's going on there if you look at the primary immune response video. So here is our neutrophil, and here is a pathogen that has entered the body. In the blood and the tissue fluid, we have got... Uh, proteins. There's lots of different kinds of proteins and these proteins here are called complement proteins. So these help with the process of phagocytosis and what they can do is they can attach onto the surface of a pathogen. So it acts like a, a marker. Because they help the process of phagocytosis they're called opsonins. So an opsonin is something which um, enhances the process of phagocytosis. The other thing that helps uh, in terms of recognition of the pathogen is that pathogens will produce chemical signals. So these chemical signals are produced. Um, also, if you've got a pathogen which invades a host cell, then that host cell sends out histamine signals. Uh, histamine is a chemical. So a host cell that's been infected will send out histamine. Um, it's a bit like sort of a, a help signal. Pathogens send out chemicals themselves and we've also got these complement proteins which are attached. All of this helps attract our neutrophils and the process of attraction is called chemotaxis because it's the movement, so taxis is to do with movement, it's the movement of the neutrophil towards the pathogen um, as a result of various chemical stimuli, so chemotaxis. So the neutrophil is attracted to the pathogen and moves towards it. And then the process of phagocytosis can take place. So it has to recognise it. So obviously it's been attracted to it, but it has to definitely recognise that this is what we call a non-self uh, cell or um, you know, something that is non-self and needs to be destroyed. So here's our pathogen with our opsonins, our complement proteins on there. And the neutrophil, of course, has got lots of receptors in its cell surface membrane. So this particular receptor here is able to bind to the complement proteins. And therefore, it recognises 
to complement proteins, which means that it must be bound to a pathogen. There are various other ways that the neutrophil could recognize the pathogen as well. So, of course, neutrophils have got, uh, sorry, neutrophils, uh, pathogens have got antigens on their surface. They'd have lots of different antigens. So here you can see these little uh, blue triangles represent the antigens. So some of the pathogens may already have encountered antibodies specific to those particular antigens. So there may be antibodies attached to the antigen, which is also then marking the pathogen as being non-self. And the neutrophil has got receptors in the cell surface membrane, which can uh, bind to the constant end of the antibody. So we've got the neutrophil bound to the antibody, which is bound to the antigen. And that's a way of recognizing it. It's also possi possible for pathogens just to bind to the cell surface membrane directly without the involvement of any receptors. OK, so the pathogen has been recognized, which means that it can then be um, engulfed. So we're not going to worry about those two. We're just going to look at this as our example. So the next stage is that engulfing happens. So the cell surface membrane invaginates. This is a process, this is endocytosis. This is, it's the same process, but we just call it phagocytosis, but it's an example of endocytosis. So the cell surface membrane invaginates and then it fuses around the pathogen. So that what we've got now is we've got um, a large vesicle or vacuole with the pathogen inside it. We call it a phagosome um, or phagosome. It can also be called a phagocytic vacuole. And in order to destroy our pathogen inside our phagosome, we use the lysosomes which are inside the cell. So remember, lysosomes are small vesicles and they contain hydrolytic enzymes. So here's a close up of what's going on. Um, so we've got our phagosome with our phagocyte inside. I haven't shown the complement proteins here, so this is just a, uh, just a pathogen on its own. And you can see here, we have our lysosomes. They would be throughout the cell. Um, they'd be produced from the Golgi apparatus. They'd be throughout the cell, but these lysosomes have uh, migrated to the phagosome. When they migrate to the phagosome, uh, they will then fuse with the, surface, uh, with the membrane of the phagosome, and those hydrolytic enzymes will get released into the phagosome. And once in there, they're able to digest the pathogen or the antigen or whatever it is. Those hydrolytic enzymes, there's lots of different enzymes. So inside the lysosome, uh, we might find some lysozyme, protease, lipase, there'd be carbohydrates, all different kinds of enzymes could be inside the lysosome and they all uh, digest different parts um, of the pathogen. Okay, that's it. That's the process of phagocytosis. Thank you very much.